Hello! Welcome! This is part 20 of Let's Play Dark Souls. I guess this is a milestone. <laughs> um, either way, we're here. Um, giving you Grig's point of view here. Um, so I accidentally talked to him. He had some new dialogue for us. So I'm um, not going to get that. My bad. But um, he still does have some stuff to say. So let's see. Oh, hello. You made it. Then let us begin. As promised, I shall bequeath Master Logan's sorcery to you. Yeah, so what I missed is he basically um, said that Logan has gone off on another adventure because he's clearly not here. Specifically, he's gone off to the Grand Archives in search of magic. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, now we can learn things like Soul Spear from Griggs. Um, he's just going to teach us all that other stuff that we didn't buy. But we uh, don't have the souls or the need for any of those, so let's just quickly hear what else he has to say. It's not that I'm concerned for Master Logan's welfare. Even in this treacherous land, Logan's skills are unmatched. He is a true hero. No, the reason I seek Logan is, well, it's really my own conceit now, isn't it? Yeah, so he's still obsessed with Logan. Um, but anyway. Goodbye then. Do stay safe. That's actually where we're headed today. Um, not sure if I said that, but our first target in terms of the big four Lord Souls is going to be... Uh, can be seat the scaleless and he is found at that place that we um sort of poked into back when we were in Analando, if you remember so um let's just get right to it we've uh, we spent the last two episodes kind of going to random spots and tying up miscellaneous loose ends that way uh that way we can divert all of our attention to uh these main parts here so see the scaleless right i don't think we've talked much about him um we saw him in the opening cutscene. um he was that pale, gross-looking dragon that uh, betrayed his kind in order for uh, Gwyn to win the war. Now, after the Age of Fire, Gwyn gave him some of his soul, which is what we're after. Um, and that's going to bring us up here. He, not only did he give him his soul, he also gave him his own whole um, building, as we're about to see. And in here, he started magic. Yes, Seath was the source of all magic. Um, at least magic as we know it. There's, of course, many different types of magic in the world of Dark Souls. But the whole, like, blue lightning bolt variety is uh, is the Seath brand. So, right here we got the guard dog, or rather, guard pig. So we're just gonna do a nicely timed dodge. And, oh, that's right. The one that we first fought way back in Undead Bird, you can actually backstab him in the butt, which I don't think I did. But these ones, or rather this one, I'll just say for now. He, they did cover up their, um, their back hole there. But these guys ain't so too bad. Um, you just gotta stay calm, be careful. And they'll go down pretty easily. And if we continue along down the corridor here, you might think, oh awesome, we beat one. That was the main challenge, now we're ready to take on the thing. Well, ain't done yet. There's two, because why not? <laughs> so, let's just take this one out the same way. Just gonna be careful. Um, they got the upper hand at the beginning, being able to just charge down at you, but once you close the distance, it's actually a much harder time for them. So, it's, uh, oh, and we got the Fangbor helmet. Um, this is a fun drop that you have a chance of getting on early. Um, I don't think it's, like, that good, but if you want to look like a pig, and yeah, <laughs> you can use this. Uh, I'm going to stick with my knight helmet, because I just prefer it. Uh, elite knight helmet, rather. Um, so right here we got our bonfire, which we are, of course, going to light and rest at. And I don't think... No, I can't level up. Not for another 10,000 souls, it looks like. But, um, yeah, seat spared no expense. His archives, as you can see, are very um, ornate, <laughs> very well-made. So we're gonna smell the roses best we can. Not that there's any actual roses, but anyway, there's a, there's a lot on the plate to talk about in terms of lore and what exactly is going on here. So um, first off, in the distance over there, you can you'll see is a channeler. It's one of those guys that we fought way back in. God, way back in the top of the church, if you remember, as well as one in uh, the depths. And here we have these crystal hollows who, they seem like, oh, they're just hollows, they're not too bad, but they're actually really annoying. <laughs> they hit very hard, and the channelers, of course, are going to be boosting them 
Um, they do their little dance, and then if they're glowing, they're going to do extra damage. These guys already hit hard. Oh, well, I got the parry, but that's the other annoying thing is I feel like these guys just always jump out of nowhere. Like, you think, okay, there's just one, and then two of them are going to just do this annoying jumping attack, which has a lot more range than you'd think. And look, they're just taking chunks out of my health here. Um, over there. Wow. Again. <laughs> See? You lower your guard and you think that you're safe, but you're not. It comes out so fast, too. Oh my god. Alright, let's just push them off. <laughs> Alright, so we're down to five Estus already, but let's warm it up. Once I get used to how these guys work, won't be too bad. So before we charge in, um, this guy right here. He's a very special crystal golem, and uh, he actually is going to drop something very important for us, which I'll talk about in a second here, once we kill him. The Broken Pendant. So, oh, God dang it, I hate these guys. Um, this golem's only going to appear and drop that thing if he rescued, um, what's her name, the, oh god, I'm blanking out, but the, the princess from the Hydra who we rescued. These guys too, because look, they teleport away, and then you got to keep chasing them. And now the archers are bonus. <laughs> um, but again, so remember when I said, um, you know, Vinheim is the Harry Potter knockoff? Well, this place is just going to be full of Harry Potter references because magic, of course. Now, I always hesitate here because I'm not always sure of the best approach. I like to just sort of. You, know, you, you have to decide between prioritizing the archers or just going right for the magician. Um, I think I'm gonna rush for the mage. Get a lot of projectiles to avoid. And okay, we got him. So that's good. Uh, okay. And again, all these guys are powered up, so watch out. Um, but anyway, I'm trying to talk some more lore about Seath. And what he's about. So he betrayed the dragons, right? Uh, why did he do that? Uh, that's because most dragons are immortal. Right? They're sort of like these stone everlasting beings, whereas Seath was born a little different. He um, he was born scaleless, which is part of his name, Seath the Scaleless. And the thing is, with dragons, for some reason it's their scales that give them their immortality. Um, as for exactly why, I'm not sure. That's just where the magic is, I guess. I got another soul item there, of course. So Seath, without his scales, was like, you know, all the other dragons made fun of him. Uh, you're not immortal. And uh, he got this uh, immortality complex. So Seath uh, decided, you know, all you dragons make fun of me. All you guys are uh, I'm different. I'm going to help out these uh, lords and their fire and souls and all. And then, ah, what just hit me? Oh, there's one behind me, of course. Running low on Estus here. Man, these guys are so annoying. It's just that jumping attack. It's the jumping attack that makes me hate them so much. Okay, so anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, Seath decided to betray them, and for his reward, he was given the archives and some of Gwyn's soul. I'm not sure if this is a. Yep, it is. <laughs> so um, we know how to handle these guys. Um, sorry, I keep getting sidetracked. But, again, Seath, the reason why he's the father of magic and does all that is because um, he wasn't born immortal, but he wanted to be immortal. So, uh, Oh, and this is a crystal night shield, which uh, is just the night shield which we already have, but upgraded to be crystal, so it's better, but temporary. Um, but Seath, yes, he was looking for immortality, how to be immortal. And so, all the magic that the world of Dark Souls has is just sort of leftover side effects, I guess you could say, of trying to find magic. Like, all these guys are crystal because Seath was experimenting, trying to make them immortal, and made them crystal. So, of course, there's all sorts of different benefits to being crystal, like doing more damage. Um, but it's not what Seath wants. So he's still looking. It's sort of like one of those um, never-ending quests, I guess you could say, because, um, spoiler alert, but... You can't just use magic to be immortal. So Seath is forever doomed to, um, you know, trying all sorts of crazy experiments and crossing all sorts of moral boundaries, as we'll soon find out. 
And um, the, the Duke's archives is basically ground zero for all that. Um, the channelers, right? Those magician guys who we fought and just killed just now. Those are sort of his main um, henchmen. I guess you could say he sends them out through Lordran to sort of abduct people for experiments. That's why anywhere that we see them is uh, basically somewhere that Seath is interested in. He uh, sent one to the Undead Berg because he must have wanted something here. Oh, and then there's this guy here. This is the Crystal Knight, someone who like isn't really talked about, but he's just an interesting character for some reason. And, but he goes down really easy. <laughs> just overloaded with crystal equipment, making him heavy. But uh, yeah, his channels are essential. This is where they all are. And of course, you know, crystals being the main theme of magic. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> Crystals being the main theme of magic, we're going to find a lot of crystal wizards and twinkling titanite. And um, I believe by now I have enough to upgrade my sword all the way to plus five. So I might do that after that in a bit here. So anyway, where we are now is um, an interesting spot. This is, uh, if you remember... Oh, and I had my rusted iron ring on. So that explains why I had no poise. But um, we're not putting our wolf ring back on. We're going to put on the... Should definitely help. Yeah, a rare ring of sacrifice, right? So we have the, this ring of sacrifice right here. Uh, you die, it breaks, you keep your stuff. Whereas this, it's gonna also free you from a curse. Um, this is finally when we should wear this thing. Um, and it'll make sense in a second here because you'll see. It's, yeah, we're already fighting Seath. Um, we're not actually already fighting Seath, although we are, <laughs> but uh, we, can't, we can't kill him for a few reasons. Uh, we kind of have to just accept that we die. And uh, his, because we, we can't get over there, and uh, even if we could, projectile attacks are not going to um, hurt him. Uh, this is like the only part in the game where you actually have to die. Um, and you'll see in a second here. So obviously, with our ring, we keep our uh, our souls and humanity. Uh, we didn't actually need to use the rare ring in that case because um, we didn't get cursed, thankfully. But his breath can curse you, which is why you put it on just in case. But anyway, when you die there, you show up here. He, uh, he takes you, he puts you in his jail cell um, with some other failed experiments. Ooh, they're just gonna chill there. No need to go get him. Uh, so let's light the bonfire here. And uh, we'll see what all this looks like in a second here. Um, I am going to... There should be a reinforced weapon, yes. I should have enough now to get this thing maxed out. Yep, our last four Twinkling Titanite. We can now get it to plus five. And as you can see, the stats are going to be noticeably better. And now our sword is looking pretty good. Uh, oh, and I also have enough to level up, so I'm just going to do that real quick. Now let's see here. Could get my intelligence up. Maybe, maybe not. Let's get a little bit more attunement. Um, get another slot here, throw in another spell or two. We still have to get our intel intelligence up a bit. But uh, we've still got some time before we really need to. Um, right here we're going to see a snake man, from, or serpent man, rather, from Sen's Fortress. Implying that they're the product of Seath, which kind of makes sense, because serpent men are like sort of half-dragon, half-people, and Seath being half-dragon. Uh, there's a lot of half-dragon references with Seath, so anyway, let's go out here. Um, oh, we actually need to pick up the key off of his body, and that'll let us out, as well as open a lot of the other cell doors. But once we do, the alarms are going to get sounded. Yeah, with that, the um, alarms have been sounded, and and these guys are just gonna ignore you. Um, I got lucky and just sort of caught him there. But yeah, they are just gonna get the heck out of here because those uh, scary blue things are gonna be making their way to us. And um, this creepy uh, music, <laughs> if you want to call it that, which we're hearing right now, is basically what's controlling these things. And I believe they're called like pisakas or something like that. And yeah, they're these guys are nasty. Um, they'll try to grab you. They'll spit things at you. And they drop humanity, so let's see, can I take them out? Yeah. Uh, our sword is doing a lot of damage now. Um, the thing with these things is that some of them are like really aggressive and are gonna just run way up here. 
whereas there's still going to be a large group of them down there. And they're a bit more annoying to take on all at once. But, um, no biggie. We're just going to keep on pressing on. They go down pretty easily, so it's when they swarm you. you got to watch out. And we might get a two-for-one here. Yeah, so these things are, again, they fall into the failed experiment crowd <laughs> of Seath's monsters. Um, and they're just like, oh god, one got me. So you'll see here. Ah, yeah, they'll stab you with the spear that they have deep inside of them. Oh, they got me. Wow. I don't think I've ever died to these <laughs> things before. Got a little careless there. Um, no big deal, though. We're just going to respawn, come back down. And I think... Yeah, so we don't get the cutscene, but they are going to pull the alarm again and start chasing us. I don't know if you can actually see that. Or maybe not. Ah, I didn't know that. I guess, okay, so if you die, they don't come back again. Um... So we're going to keep making our way down, though, obviously, because we want our souls. And um, there's a few other things of interest down there. And actually, I believe the key to get out of here, which is up there where those snake men are climbing right now, we have to come down here to get the key. So, okay, this is actually kind of convenient. Um, the Now we're still going to have to fight through them, and this is actually almost more annoying because, you know, half of them came up, we were able to pick them off, whereas now we're going to have to take them all on at once. Yeah, so before we do that, let's actually come up here, maybe, and see what we can do. Now up here we're going to find some more serpent men. Oh, oh no, lock onto that one, please. <laughs> now, this is a good time. I like to take out this guy first. That way they're not throwing thunderbolts at you. And wow. An agile one. But it goes down easy. Uh. Alright, just heal up real quick. And yeah, so these are enemies which are really annoying to fight two at once like this. Because, you know, you have, to, you have to sort of wait for both of them to give you an opening, which doesn't always happen, or just sneak behind them <laughs> and get a backstab. And then do the same thing over here. Yeah, backstabs are, you know, sort of the easy way out of most scenarios, but, you know, if I'm getting 2v1'd, it's already kind of unfair. <laughs> so anyway, in here we're going to find the key that we want. Um, but down there... Now, actually, so, if you listen carefully... We hear crying, and uh, that gives us a hint as to what exactly the Picassas are. Um... So let's go down here, and did I grab my souls? 15,000. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought I was missing, <laughs> missing something there. But anyway, uh, this is a good time to use our handy dandy Great Chaos Fireball, since these things are just going to sort of stand still for us. And oh, yeah, they shoot their junk at us as well. Yeah, they're going to go down real simply like that. Um, but as far as... oh boy! And it got me. Alright, let's try not to die again here. Just fall back and heal really quick. Yeah, a lot of grabs in Dark Souls I'm not a huge fan of because, like, the hitbox just does not line up with what you're actually seeing. Like, the very tip of it touches me, and then all of a sudden I'm teleporting to their clutches. So, let's just take out these last few ones here. Ow. Okay. Jeez. So annoying. Um, so these two right here are the ones that are actually crying. If go close to them. Over here. And um, the reason that is, is that these things are specifically um, maidens that have been experimented on. Little defenseless girls that have been kidnapped. <laughs> and I don't know what Seath was doing them to them to make them like this, but, you know, a few, a few too many souls, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, these two, they drop some miracles. Bountiful Sunlight and the uh, Soothing Sunlight. Now these are special miracles. These can only be used if you're part of the Princess Guard uh, Covenant, which we did join, so we know about it. Um, but that implies that uh, these maidens specifically were Guinevere's handmaidens, and there's a whole lot of drama if you really want to go down that lore rabbit hole. 
in terms of Seath having his eyes on Gwyn's family, which is uh, kind of gross. But anyway, we've uh, we put him out of their misery, so I guess we're the hero. <laughs> um, right here, we see a familiar face, Big Hat himself, in a very similar situation. So let's see what he wants from us. Hello again. What a chance meeting this is. Alas, I'm imprisoned once again. I don't suppose you could stage me a getaway. The archives. Such a storehouse of knowledge. So close, but just out of reach. The thought offends me, so I could simply die. As a student of the arts, you understand me, eh? Hello again. Alas, I'm in... Oh, yeah, he doesn't have much else to say. As a student... Basically, we have to find another key and rescue him. Uh, the key we found was not the key for this. Um, so, we're going to get that much later in the level. It's kind of annoying because there's a lot of backtracking in this place. So, not not my favorite part of Dark Souls, but not too big a deal. So, that item over there is also going to be very um, very important for us. So, uh, let's, uh, let's head on back up now that we have the key out of here. Uh, there's a few more things we, we're going to want to do. Such as uh, our, the key that we got off the guard when we first killed him. That it kind of opens up all the doors in this area. So we can actually explore all these and see what we can find. Uh, most of them just have like an enemy in them uh, who you can hit through the wall because why not? <laughs> kind of makes sense here because like I guess you're hitting them through the bars, but uh, you know, collision system in Dark Souls just isn't that great. Um, so here's the extra key. I believe. Uh, okay, I kind of lied just now. I think that. There's a few cells which we can't open, but now we can because we have the extra key. Seems a little redundant, but um, I think yeah, most of these are just going to have guys in them who we can ignore, and it gets me every time. Thankfully, these ones aren't powered up, so not it doesn't hurt as bad, but yeah. See, the problem is, yeah, they can charge it, or they'll just come out of nowhere with it. Very annoying, but uh, we will survive. Uh, oh, just a little drop down to where we just were. Um, I would say though, okay, if you're coming back down here, which we are going to have to, so I should follow my advice, um, you're going to want to close these doors, otherwise if you rest at a bonfire and they respawn, where is the trigger for it? Right there. Ah, uh, yeah, close these doors after you get what you need, because otherwise all them enemies are going to wander out and just get in your way and be annoying, which, uh, you know, life is hard enough as it is, we don't need any extra difficulties like that. Another uh, brave warrior is found in. Yeah, found is uh, left to rot here in the archives. Which, um, again, with the Harry Potter references, should. Uh, I'm no fan of it myself, so I was sort of just taking other people's words, but if you're a fan of Harry Potter, I believe this should be giving off some big vibes right now. So let's uh, finish this guy off. Let's see what they have in here. There's, um, there's one special set of armor that we're going to want to get around here, but uh, we actually don't get it from the cell, we get it by dropping down from above somewhere, and to do that we actually have to go up here first. Now you'll notice there's a soul item somewhere down on one of the shelves. I'm not going to go for that one since it's super easy to die, so yeah, over there is the cell we want to make it to. Um, oh god, look at that, just ah, and don't let him kick you too much otherwise you're going to you're gonna get like just you're gonna fall off and take a bunch of fall damage, which is uh, no fun. Wow! How rude. Okay, that'll do it. Oh, and I just realized I got an empty ring slot, which we should definitely put our wolf ring back on. All right, now we're back to it. Um, and, ooh, did you drop for me the man serpent green sword? Awesome. So that's actually a really cool drop we just found. That's um, one of the better strength weapons because it scales so well. It's got, I think it's got like an A in strength scaling. And the thing with that is like it's an okay sword for us, but like if you're just doing a strength build specifically, which means you're just dumping everything into strength, um, you're going to be interested in that. Um, now, okay, I just realized. <gasps> I hate this sometimes. <laughs> ah! Alright, not too big of a deal. Not too big of a deal. Um, we're just going to be right back here. I have to fight these guys again, but I'm going to run up and grab my souls before... Actually, here, how about this? Let's uh, let's get up here before them, and then we'll have the high ground. Now, the annoying thing is, I think they can, like, nip at me, but 
you as a player can't actually do a ladder attack, which is very annoying. Um, yes, let's just grab these before something stupid happens. And I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to just give these guys a kick. No, somehow I got hurt doing that. <laughs> but Alright, if you're going to show me your back, I guess we'll take that. Maybe as well. <laughs> right, went a little bit more smoothly there. Um, but, okay, now that we have Estus, I feel a little bit better about this jump. Uh, I'm going to try to learn from our mistakes again. Uh, we want to aim for those boards down there. I think if I go this way and then roll... There we go. All right, that went well. Right here we're going to find the Maidenhood, um, as well as the White Sands Ring, which is something to do with miracles. Um, maidens, like I said, were something that Seath was especially interested in, so he had a lot of them locked up here, <laughs> which is, uh, again, kind of gross, but what can you do? Um, that set specifically is a set that um, is on a character who we met. If you remember way back when um, Petrus, the creepy bull, Volcut guy from Firelink that sold us miracles. Um, when his friends showed up, there was that one like girl praying in the corner. Um, she was using the maiden set, and um, we'll be seeing more of her you know, once we go down one of the other main routes. Um, she's not involved with this. We just happened to find her set here because again, Seath and maidens and all that. Um, anyway, let's just quickly level up, and we'll call it an episode. Um, I imagine there's probably gonna be two, maybe maybe three more episodes in this area. Um, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. We'll get through it, I guess, nothing. Um, as you can see now, we have another attunement slot. So let's, uh, think about what we want to attune here. Um, uh, probably just a pyromancy, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Ooh, lightning Spear could be fun. Mid Force. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's try a Mid Force. Well, no, then I have to have an, uh, a, a, what's it called, equipped? A, uh, blah, what's the word? Talisman, that's what it is, yeah. So, I'm just gonna stick with the pyromancy stuff, so just go with fire orb. Um, I'll do as well. Anyway, let's call it an episode there before we go over time. Um, guys, thank you for watching. I've had a lot of fun doing this, as always, and um, I hope you had fun as well. So, I will see you guys next time.